So now I, I'm going to introduce myself. Uh, hi, I'm Vita. Uh, it's so nice to meet all of you. Uh, like everyone here, I'm also a Rubis and I'm from China. Um, I'm not sure if you like pandas or not, but I'm living in the hometown of Panda, which is called Sichuan Province. Uh, <clears throat> this is my email and this is my GitHub, uh, my Twitter. So if you have any questions or just want to make a friend, you can reach out of me uh, in those ways. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I think uh, some here might be curious about why a Chinese girl would appear on a meetup in Singapore. Uh, there is actually a reason for that. Uh, I've been to Singapore before, and to be honest, I really love this beautiful country and the kind people that I've met when I was traveling. Uh, since I returned to home, I wondered if I could learn more about Singapore. Uh, after I searched up on the internet, I was surprised to find the Ruby SG and even more surprised that I could have a chance to be a part of it. Mm, all right, uh, that's why I'm here and I think it's time to do our business. So uh, <clears throat> what I'm going to share today is how to dockerize a Rails application. Okay, so uh, considering that some people may not know um, much about Docker, so I will give a brief introduction to it. Mm, first of all, we need to know what is Docker. Uh, Docker is a tool uh, designed to make it easier to create, deploy, and run applications by using containers. So a, a container is deployed from a Docker image, and it's a part of Docker. Mm, container is a standard unit of software and that packages up the code and all its dependencies. So the application is able to run quickly and reliable from uh, one computing environment to another. Uh, in my view, uh, Docker is a bit like a virtual machine, but it won't create a whole virtual operating system. Instead, Docker applications are allowed to use the same uh, Linux kernel as the system they are running on. And speaking of why I choose Docker, personally, one of my favorite things about Docker is that um, Docker keeps the development, test, and uh, um, production environments consistent. But it also has many advantages, such as more efficient use of uh, system uh, resources, faster uh, startup times, easier migration, easier maintenance and expansion. <clears throat> so uh, here I've broken down the process of dockerizing the Rails application into five steps. Um, first one, uh, we need to have a Rails application. Uh, second, uh, we need to install the Docker. Uh, the third step, uh, at least uh, we need to set up a Docker file to cu customize our own image. Uh, step four, we need to set up a Docker Compose YAML file to customize our containers. And the last step is to execute Compose command to create and uh, start the containers. Mm, but today time is limited, so I'll uh, assume that we already installed Docker and we already have Rails application. So we will just talk about how to set up a Docker file and a Docker Compose file. Um, by the way, uh, the following materials are all from my uh, one of my demo projects. Uh, the full code and configurations can be found in my Git repository, uh, uh, res repository, I'm sorry. And I have detailed how to uh, Dockerize a Rails project from scratch in Redmi. Uh, and here's my link. So <clears throat> uh, let's start with Dockerfile. So, what is Dockerfile for? Uh, basically, Dockerfile is used to customize a Docker image. Mm, this is a Dockerfile which is used in my previous demo project. Uh, let's look at the first line. As I said before, we need to customize our own image. So when we customize an image, it should base on another image. And the from command is used to specify the base image. 
so it's a necessary command and must be put it on the first line of the Docker file. Uh, the third uh, line, maintainer command, as the command su suggests, uh, it specifies the maintainer of the image. Uh, the line five to line seven, both of them use command run, which is to execute our command. Uh, the line five is to update installation source for Alpine Linux, and line seven is to install the dependencies. Mm, as we can see, the line nine uh, is to create a folder under which we will, uh, we will store the Rails project uh, files. Uh, let's talk about WorkDIR, uh, which is in line 11. Uh, WorkDIR command, work command is used to specify work directory, but why we need to specify work directory? So here, here is an example. Mm. Um, let's assume that I previously created a folder on my Linux called test uh, Docker file. And then I created a Docker file in test Docker file. So now uh, it uh, looks, like, looks like this. Um, <clears throat> so in this, this example, you can see that basically I want to create uh, the app folder in an image, then create a folder, uh, create a file called hello.txt in an app folder. And in the end, I want to print out the contents of hello.txt, just like uh, how we do it with shell. But after I executed docker build command, now we can see the arrow below step five, uh, which says it can't find the hello.txt in app folder. Uh, so it turns out docker image works not like shell. Uh, when we use shell, uh, several lines of commands are in the same process. Uh, therefore, the memory state, which is modified by the previous command, will directly affect the later command. So in the shell, we can print out hello.txt successfully following those commands mm, because they are in the one process. But it works really different when we build Docker image. When we build a Docker image, we can imagine that we are playing Lego. And each Docker command in the Docker file is considered a layer of Legos. So the image will be built layer by layer. The front layer is the foundation of the next layer. But if the field of the front layer is completed, then it won't change anymore. And any change on the later layer affects only on its own. So every layer is totally separated from each other, which means every command in the Docker file does not affect the others. Mm, so in this example, the reason for the error is because um, when we execute equal hello to uh, hello.txt command, its working directory is not in the app folder. Since the change directory to app folder command, this command is executed, is executed in the previous layer. It doesn't affect this one, this layer. Uh, therefore, we should use work dir command to specify the working directory. And then the working directory on each layer will be changed to the specified one. And if the directory uh, we specified does not exist, the work DIR command will help you to create the directory. Okay, so <laughs> let's go back to 13. Here, um, <clears throat> at line 13 and line uh, 14, I want to copy my local gym file and gym file.log to my target path. At line 15, I set Rails environment vari variables variable to uh, production. Then at line 16 is to install bundler. Uh, line 17 is to check bundle uh, is, uh, version. At line 18 is to execute bundle install. Uh, look at nine, line 19. Okay, here I've got something to talk. Uh, as you can see, I wanna copy all the files uh, under the path where the Docker file is located to the app folder, but um, here's a question. Since I have got, I have to 
uh, copy all the files into my image anyway. So why do I have to uh, put gym file and copy gym file and copy gym file dot lock uh, separately before the ROM bundle install, right? Mm. <clears throat> so I put an example here. Uh, just uh, let's assume that I just modified an HTML and now I want to rebuild my image. If my Docker file is like this, so <clears throat> uh, at line 13, uh, I copied all my files to my uh, to the app folder. And the ROM bundle install is at line 18. Uh, so <clears throat> the action of copy all the file is in front of the run bundle install command. Then uh, when I build my image, it work. It will work like this. So here is a list of bundle install. Mm. <clears throat> As you can see, Docker will execute all the remaining commands from the line where I copied all the files. So the run bundle install command will be executed. Uh, well, whether or not the gym, uh, gym file and gym file dialog are changed. Uh, but according to my original settings, um, as long as I don't modify gym file and gym file dialog, then run bundle install command won't be executed. And when I build my image, uh, it will look like this. So here. Um, as you can see, there is not a long list of bundle install. Okay, so let's go back to the last line. At the last line, we will execute the uh, commands to create tables, uh, pre-compile our assets before pushing code to production, and create profile uh, to config directory. Uh, but one thing we need to be careful, that is the CMD command is the start command for the main process of the container. So since the CMD command is used to start the main process, uh, there can only be one CMD command in a Docker file, unlike the run command, which can be write uh, multiple times. <clears throat> All right, then that's for the Docker file part. Uh, I'm going to jump to the step four. Uh, <clears throat> so set up Docker file, Docker compose file. Mm, what is compose? Um, but <clears throat> first of all, we need to know what is compose. Compose is a tool for defining and running multi-container Docker applications. Uh, we use compose YAML file to deploy uh, containers for images from images. Sorry. Um, and the second thing we need to know is what, what's the use of a uh, Docker Compose. Mm, in our daily work, our projects often require not only web service, but also databases and may also need to use Nginx for load balancing. <clears throat> balancing. So when we Dockerize our projects, we often meet situations that require uh, multiple containers to work together. And Compose just fulfills such a need. It allows the user to define a set of uh, associated application containers as a project um, by setting up a Docker Compose YAML file. So here, uh, finally, we are going to talk about our, our uh, Docker Compose file. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the first line, <clears throat> the version. Uh, key. The version depends on the Docker release. There is a table in the Docker documentation that maps a different version with their re respective uh, Docker releases. At second line, services key. Um, here is a <clears throat> something I need to talk. Uh, Docker services are what uh, that makes up our application, which will be built as different containers. Uh, and the services acts as the organs of our application. So here we got three services, uh, app service and DB service and Nginx service. Mm. So, okay. Right now we are going to break out our first container and it's also uh, called an app service. 
Mm. At line four, mm, the build key specifies the path uh, where the Docker file is located. Uh, the path can be either absolute or relative, and the Compose will use the Docker file to automatically build an image and then use it. Uh, line five to line six, <clears throat> ports key maps the port in the container to the host, or we can just specify the port of the container in this way. Mm. But when the host will randomly, uh, but if we do so, uh, then the host will randomly select a port to expose the port inside the container. So in my Docker Compose file, I map the port number 3000 in container and to the host 3000. Okay. Line seven through line 10, uh, or are setting an environment, uh, environmental variables, so variables. So uh, line 11 depends on. Mm, depends on key resolves the uh, container dependency and the sequence of startup issues. Uh, when we execute uh, Docker Compose app, it starts services. Uh, <clears throat> it will start services in dependency order as defined the way it depends on. In this example, DB will be started before the app service. So, all right, let's look at our DB service. Mm. This service uh, is for installing our Postgre uh, SQL and uh, running it as a container. It will pull an already built image, which is version uh, 10.12 of Postgre from Docker Hub. I also passed the required environment variables in it uh, because time is limited today. So I'm not going to talk about how to set up engines with Docker Compose. Maybe we can talk about it some other time. Uh, and now let's jump to our last step. Um, <clears throat> after everything is set up, uh, now we all, all we need to do is run Docker Compose Compose up and run Docker Compose up hyper D. So <clears throat> the com command Docker Compose up will create services, start services, and uh, associate services related containers based on the settings in Docker Compose YAML file. Uh, the hyphen D is a detached mode, which will run the containers in the background. And then uh, app will be built with all the containers and you can view the containers with Docker PS hyphen A and here it is. So first is my uh, Nginx container, second is my app container, and last one is Postgre container. And we also can check it on browser, but never mind, it's just an ugly <laughs> demo. So, what if we want to uh, delete and uh, stop and delete the containers? Um, if we want to stop and delete containers, uh, <clears throat> we just need to run a uh, Docker Compose down. So it will delete the containers defined it in the Docker Compose YAML file. Uh, as you can see, first of all, uh, Docker, Docker will stop all the containers defined in the Docker Compose file. Then it will remove all the stop containers. Um, all right. <laughs> all of those are what I want to share today. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Uh, anybody got any questions? Uh, not from me, but it was a good session. Thank you, Vita. Uh, thank you. I'm so nervous. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. Uh, so good. It's my first time to share uh, anything on oh. internet, actually. Oh, In actually, actually, yeah. actually, I feel tired here. So let's say. <laughs> also, I, I sing from China. Oh, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. <laughs> mm. Okay. So, how can I stop to share this? Uh, uh, there's a stop share button. I uh, know. Uh, I'm sorry. 
Which one? Oh, I see. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you have to stop sharing before I can share again. I Which think I... I